Welcome to everybody. I'm uh, Luca Carettoni, and uh, I work as a security consultant in a Secure Network for Secure Network, which is um, a security company based in Milan, Italy. Today, with my colleague uh, Claudio Merloni, Hello. Uh, we would like to present our project and consideration about the Bluetooth security. Uh, before uh, starting, I would like to excuse myself for my bad English. So if you don't understand something, uh, please don't hesitate to, to ask me to repeat. Let's see the agenda for today. Um, we want uh, to, um, to, to start um, to explain where and how the project started. Uh, after that, we would like to introduce our either world spreading trolley, the blue bag. And uh, after that, we, we would like to present a uh, target attack and uh, um, make uh, the, an estimation of the effectiveness of this target attack with uh, simulation and uh, um, statistical results. Mobile computing is a quickly gaining ground in our day-to-day -day life. Um, for this reason, it's very important to consider uh, all types of wireless devices, also Bluetooth-enabled devices, uh, because Bluetooth-enabled devices are everywhere. Uh, we have a mobile phone, of course, but also printers, uh, digital camera, uh, GPS navigator, antenna. Um, so uh, it's very important to consider this device, and it's very important to consider that uh, these devices uh, today uh, have a similar uh, potentiality of uh, the normal personal computer, the normal personal computers. Uh, they have the, the same computational power, or very similar. They have the same data storage capability, and so uh, they became uh, more and more useful for people, but also uh, more vulnerable and uh, um, in interesting. Uh, and more uh, interesting for potential attackers. Uh, before started, uh, before we are started, um, before we started our project, we weren't we weren't able to find um, any data about the uh, spreading of the technology. Um, we weren't able to find any data about the uh, kind, the, ty the types of devices present in different contexts. Uh, we were interested in uh, airport stations, uh, university campus, and so on. We weren't able to find uh, data um, about the visibility time of the devices, so the time in which an aggressor could exploit a device. Uh, and also the different types and uh, models of uh, devices present in our, in our country. Uh, so um, our purpose is therefore to retrieve this information and uh, uh, so uh, we built the blue bag and, um, and evaluate the risk posed by uh, exposure to worms and human aggressor. I, I think it's important to consider that uh, uh, speaking about a Bluetooth devices survey means uh, considering uh, a reliable statistical sample, and we don't think uh, um, about uh, just simple tests made by your own PDA. Um, probably uh, everyone in this room know about uh, the key characteristic of the technology. Uh, I summarize uh, just uh, the, the most important. Uh, Bluetooth technology is a um, technology replacement of the other old standard uh, uh, old standards, like the infrared, uh, to connect and to exchange information between uh, different devices. The most common devices present today um, implement, uh, implements, uh, implement the code specification uh, 2.0 uh, from the Bluetooth um, special group interest. Uh, it's defined as an hardware um, it's, it's, an, it's defined as an hardware-based radio system with a software stack. Bluetooth works uh, near the 2.4 gigahertz uh, frequency uh, into the industrial, scientific, and medical um, band. Like Wi-Fi, uh, it's use, uh, it uses a frequency hopping speed spectrum, so a frequency hopping to 
uh, avoid um, the, the, the collision. Uh, uh, yeah, to avoid the collision. Uh, so the Bluetooth devices uh, make uh, jump uh, so uh, oops in, uh, in into 1,600 uh, oops for a second on uh, 79 channels. Bluetooth is uh, primarily designed for a uh, low power consumption device um, with a short operative range, uh, one meter for the class C devices and to, to uh, 100 meters for the class A, class A devices. Now that uh, we've shown uh, briefly the technology overview, uh, I think it's uh, quite interesting to introduce and to examine the, um, and compare the natural evolution of the standard, so the timeline uh, of the specifications, um, with uh, the vulnerabilities discovered by the expert and published in the full disclosure list. Uh, in, the 2000 and, in 2003, uh, at stake, published the tool Redfang, uh, which is uh, unusable in a real life context, but uh, it has demonstrated uh, that it's possible to find uh, a hidden device uh, doing uh, brute force, uh, a brute force guess uh, on uh, its uh, address. In the, in the same year, the Trifinish group revealed the blue snarf vulnerability, uh, which is a vulnerability that permits to, to steal uh, data from mobile phones, uh, for example, address book, with a simple unauthenticated OBIX request. The next year, in, the, in 2004, uh, the same defined group revealed the blue bug. The blue bug is um, quite, quite famous, and it permits to uh, remote controlling of devices. Um, here in black hat, the defined group shown uh, the tool uh, Bluever, which permits to, which permitted, permits to uh, to, 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 which implements uh, blue bug and other uh, attacks. Um, and recently, uh, everyone has read about the Toshiba devices uh, um, denial service, so an, another flow in the Bluetooth stack. Uh, all of these flow are um, related uh, to error in, in, in the implementation of the, of the stack and not a design error. And this flow demonstrates how, uh, how in many cases it's possible to steal information, connecting to internet, sending messages, uh, other uh, bad things. With Refined Guys, uh, we have uh, uh, now uh, very smart thing over there. <laughs> Uh, should us uh, and explain to, to everyone a uh, lot of interesting things, a lot of, a lot of interesting acts. Uh, so we want to say thank you to, to, to Refined Guys. Um, now we want to focus on uh, how could an aggressor um, ex exploit existing knowledge and vulnerabilities to uh, realize and to uh, pose uh, and target attack. I think it's uh, important to consider that vulnerability is very different uh, from risk because we need to consider other, other external factors besides the system, uh, specific system failure. Uh, if we know about a uh, mobile phone vulnerability, but we don't have this type of phone in our range, or maybe if we haven't enough time to, to exploit uh, the phone due to a particular environment, uh, I think um, we don't have a risk. We have a vulnerability, but we don't have a risk. Uh, so we, we want to focalize to, to, the, um, to, this, uh, to this data, the, the data related to external to the, to the vulnerability, but related to, to the potential risk. So the data collected with our instrument uh, the, develop, the develop model and models and simulation try to, to explain these, uh, these aspects. To retrieve this data, and so we speak about uh, a reliable statistical sample, we built the blue bag. The blue bag is a um, hardware device. Uh, it's, it's a trolley, and in, we, we 
build uh, a mini PC into a trolley uh, with, uh, for, for a lot of interesting things. Um, we were interested in train station, airports, uh, uh, I say, uh, cam university campus, shopping mall. We needed a Linux-based system embedded with uh, many Bluetooth dangles to um, uh, analyze in parallel many Bluetooth devices. Uh, we had a omnidirectional antenna to improve the range of a survey. Um, and so we, we, we built a, a tool to, um, to, to make wide area survey activities. Wirebag, uh, because uh, it's, very, it's not comfortable to go around with a notebook full of Bluetooth dangles, maybe uh, add an antenna, uh, add uh, an optional battery to improve uh, uh, power autonomy. Um, so we needed an, an hidden tool, a hidden tool, but also an easy carrying tool, an easy carrying instrument. Of course, it's, uh, you cannot uh, go around with your notebook and play, uh, maybe in crowded places, without making the curiosity of the people. Um, so we decided that we needed a tool uh, without human interaction. Uh, for this reason, uh, we think that the blue bag is a perfect tool for long session, and that's why uh, and that's, uh, that session could be long, long, and very long session. Uh, to fulfill this requirement, we built the blue bag uh, with uh, some specific components. Uh, we, used, uh, we, we use a VIA API Mini ITX motherboard. It is um, 600 megahertz fanless. Uh, we use an iPod hard drive, uh, 1.8 inch, uh, because it's uh, small. Uh, it's very uh, small hard drive, and. Uh, it can support um, acceleration up to 3G. Uh, so uh, it's perfect to, to carry on, to have it carrying around. We use eight class one uh, Bluetooth dangles and uh, one, uh, and another one, uh, a Linksys modded uh, Bluetooth dangle with uh, an omnidirectional antenna, uh, a 5 dBA gain antenna. For power supply, we use the smallest snap-in um, uh, power supply, a 12 volt power supply with 96% uh, of efficiency. So, uh, yeah, to, to improve the, uh, to reduce the power consumption of our tool. Um, after uh, some uh, tests, uh, we, we used the, the blue bag uh, for uh, more than uh, 10 hours. Yeah. Speaking about software, uh, we use, of course, a uh, GNU Linux system, a Gen2 OS, with a, serious, uh, with a 2.6 serials kernel, um, using, of course, the BlueZ uh, subsystem, so the official uh, Bluetooth stack implementation. And we develop a custom Python software, uh, which uh, will be explained to, by, okay. by Claudio. Hello. Um, I'll summarize the characteristics of the Python software we developed. Uh, it's clearly um, a multi-threaded uh, software because we need to uh, exploit all uh, the uh, resor other resources and the nine dangles uh, at the same time. Um, we needed to implement some uh, simple uh, facility to dynamically uh, allocate and manage dangles because often, um, carrying the bag around, they can unplug. Or also to be able to uh, reserve a dongle and let it, use, uh, let, let it be used by an external process uh, in respect to our software. Um, OK. Um, OK, that the dongle management is one of the core characteristics that helped us uh, to make the blue bag reliable. Because as I said before, uh, dongles and plugs, uh, you think about bikers running into the blue bag, and that happened. Um, that could be a problem. 
uh, also because uh, it will be quite difficult to stop, open the blue bag in an airport, replug the jungle, <laughs> close the blue bag, and go on. <laughs> so, uh, I read the software quite a requirement. Uh, okay, to fire it up, you used uh, just a quite uh, cool electrical key lock switch so that we just need to. Okay, turn the key, and it, like, and it turns on. It's quite cool. Uh, getting the, the blue bag out of the car and turn it on with a key. Um, okay, uh, we obviously needed some interfaces to remote control it because, again, if you are in an airport or in a train station or wh whenever, whatever, uh, you cannot uh, plug an Ethernet uh, cable like we could do now. Uh, you, we um, reserved one of the dongle to establish communication and we uh, implemented a web interfaces that uh, can be used, for example, from a PDA or a smartphone because it's very small sized and can be used to monitor the uh, logs generated by the software, um, Linux logs or whatever. Data are, storage, are stored in a MySQL database. Um, we thought about MySQLite uh, before, but there were a uh, concurrency problem mainly. So we switched to MySQL, and in fact, the power and consumption uh, did increase too much, so that's good. Um, why we used uh, an antenna uh, plugged into a dongle? Because we needed to be able to get the data in very crowded places and incrementing the range of one of the dongle uh, let us possible to uh, see a device before they actually get into the range of the other dongles. So we can scan for devices, and then the software is uh, already prepared to retrieve information when the uh, devices come into the range. Um, and of course, the multi-threaded uh, design is needed to be able to gather information from multiple uh, phones. Uh, at the same time. Okay, now let's go for uh, for demo. Okay. Um, yeah, these are the Bluetooth addresses of the dongles inside the blue bag. We connect to the blue bag uh, using SSH over uh, over PND using the pen daemon. Um, okay, we wrote a little lame script to automatically connect because uh, if a dongle unplugs, then uh, we, are, we, we wouldn't be able to know what uh, Bluetooth address has to be used to reconnect because the order changed. Okay, let's go to SSH. Okay, now we're in. Okay, as you see, it's just a Linux system with a via processor. Okay, these are the nine Bluetooth dongles. The first one, as you can see from the Bluetooth address, is different from the others and is the Linksys one. Okay. Now we switch to the web interface. As you see, it's kind of small because it's designed to be used uh, from a PDA, for example. Oh. Okay, that's good. Um, using the interface, you can actually edit some of the configuration parameters. Uh, here, the form uh, right now, at the moment, um, can be used to change only some of the parameters and are actually the parameters useful um, oh, that needs to be changed maybe during a survey. You can change the task performed by the blue bag because uh, the software can be used to perform just a survey that is uh, re uh, retrieve information about devices type, models and service list and so on, but can be used also to perform brute force attack using red, the Red Fang tools or can be performed to, to, can be used to perform what we call the stupid test, which is uh, try to see how many people would actually accept a transfer from an unknown, from unknown people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
the results are kind of surprising. Uh, but we'll, we'll see a little bit there. <laughs> OK. Um, we can uh, review the configuration so that we, are, we can be sure we are actually doing what we've seen that we'll do. Um, we can, OK, down there. Current on devices. OK. OK, we can tell the blue bag uh, to, for example, during the, that stupid test, which is kind of um, intrusive, uh, we can tell the blue bag only to contact a specific list of targets so that we can make tests uh, in lab without uh, anyone. Oh, my shit. No. <laughs> OK. Oh, let's go on. OK. Uh, no. Okay, uh, the start button do Sorry. what you think it does, obviously. Mm. Okay, so start. Yeah. Okay, now if you look at the log tail, uh, the log tail uh, just tails uh, the content of the, the display the tail of the content of a series of uh, files that can be specified in configuration. In that case, we uh, tail the content of the blue bag log, which is a log generated by our application, and the content of our log messages, which, which is quite useful to uh, look for other problems, for example. OK. OK, the last five devices, uh, boys, mm. which is not kind of working. Uh, Okay, it's working. Uh, the last five devices uh, will actually sh extract data from, database, from the database and show a brief um, summary of the characteristics of the last devices found by the blue bag. And in the session info, uh, the application uh, summarized some interesting information such as uh, how many time remain uh, to, this, to the, this session, how many devices it has found, the number of dongles uh, available in the blue bag that is quite useful to know if a dongle is accidentally unplugged. Um, and the number, uh, sorry, back, okay. Some expected demo effect. Yeah. Okay, now we just disconnected. Yeah. Okay. It will show us uh, the list of devices in the queue to be processed, and also the what we call the hostile devices, which are devices from which uh, the software hasn't been able to gather every kind of info that we try to get. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so well, if you maybe also later we can play a little bit more. You, we can show you something else. Okay. Let's move on. Um, during our first test, uh, we focused on uh, identifying uh, devices we uh, wanted just to know how many devices are actually uh, visible, how many have a Bluetooth active, and um, surveying different contexts, different areas, uh, where we expected to find different kind of users. Uh, so we wander, went, wandered around with the blue bag in shopping malls, in a train station, in the major Milanese airport, and we gather info not only um, about the number of devices, but info that can help identify the type and the model of, devi the, of the devices, so the SDP service list and so on. Um, in a total amount of less than 24 hours, we identified more than 1,400 devices in these different um, contexts. Let's get Let's see some number. OK, uh, the 93% of the devices found were, were uh, mobile phones, uh, only 3% of uh, computers, 2% PDAs, 
GPS antennas and other smart minor percentages. Um, what's interesting is that the 60% of the mobile phones were Nokia ones, while only the 1.8% were Mot Motorola. That, in fact, uh, could be explained uh, by the fact that Motorola phones, by default, are visible uh, and invisible mode or discoverable mode, sorry, only for a small amount of time after which they switch to non discoverable mode. Um, the 80%? Yeah, the, yeah. the 80% uh, um, of these devices. Uh, of the. Yeah, of the Nokia, of the yeah, Nokia devices. The 6310i Nokia devices. Have uh, uh, no. Um, uh, some, you know, denial of service or. Uh, in, uh, yeah, the, the denial of service vulnerability, and uh, also um, the the Earthcom port, uh, the channel um, eight, uh, 17, 17 and 18, 18 um, are open and uh, uh, without uh, requiring pairing. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, some other numbers we try to extract from the database was the, what we call the visibility time, that is uh, the time that a device has been, or the average time, a device has been actually uh, in the range of the blue bag. Um, that's kind of important because that represents the time that an attacker have, uh, has available to perform uh, information gathering and attacks. And for example, in the airport, the time was mm, more than 20, uh, 23, seconds. That's kind of long time interval. Okay, uh, after we published the report, we've been mm, kind of quickly slash that. Uh, we read many interesting comments, some rude ones, but uh, we try to answer to some question and some to clear some points. Uh, one of the question was, isn't that the same old stuff? Uh, well, that's not true because we gather more data than others did before. We have long sessions and we, um, we developed a kind of framework to do that kind of thing and so on. Um, another guy uh, said that there's no security risk uh, posed by Bluetooth technology and so on. And in fact, a slash dot reader uh, answered with a Hello, my Quite friend. funny. Answer. You remember yeah. back in uh, back, back, back in to the future. Back yeah. in the future, yeah. That's, that's a good answer. Um, another reader said that the uh, serving scenario is not mm, much interesting. It's quite pointless because what's interesting is the data theft problem. But that's in fact the reason we gather that kind of data and the reason we developed the software and we did what we're going to show um, in the rest of the presentation. Okay. Um, after that first report, we tried to gather uh, some other kind of data. Uh, we needed to gather a quantitative measure of how uh, a Bluetooth worm could easily spread. Um, and that uh, measure uh, is also needed to um, implement mathematical models or to do simulation to see how effective will be uh, a Bluetooth world. Um, we also needed to, um, to gather the average number that a Bluetooth worm could propagate to, um, being propagated by a single device, so not using something like the blue bag. And of course, as I said, as I said earlier, uh, we wanted to know exactly how high could be the success rate of a such an engineering uh, propagation technique. And that number uh, is quite high, in fact. Um, we did some tests, and mm, more than 10% of the devices of people, of the users, actually accept a transfer from unknown people. Uh, okay. Uh, there's an, some sort of intrinsic limit in a tool like the blue bag or any other tool that can be used to do survey. 
That is, uh, it can be used only uh, to do end-to-end -end inquiry, that is, end dangles in the blue bag to end devices uh, in contemporary, but no more. Um, to get some more realistic data, we implemented uh, a framework that can be used to do distributed surveying. So we have agents that can be spread by the blue bag or other devices, um, spread in a good way, um, so that other devices can distributely uh, help doing that scan, so we could uh, survey a wider area and so on. And that devices just do the inquiry, uh, save log data, and re return the results back to the blue bag. Okay. Uh, a little bit of the internals, uh, quite simple. Uh, our agents are composed by an envelope and a payload. The envelope is a piece of software that just scans for Bluetooth devices and tries to uh, propagate itself to that devices. It has a list of targets, that is, um, a list of uh, users that wish to help uh, uh, doing the survey and it tries to propagate only to that uh, group of targets. When propagated, uh, it deploys what we call the payload, which is uh, just a piece of software to be executed on the victims. Uh, that piece of software collects data, uh, generates logs, and sends these logs back to the blue bag via Bluetooth, or in fact using, um, could use uh, SMS, use uh, emails, or whatever. Okay, a couple simple pictures. Uh, on the right, kind of um, stupid picture, uh, they show us the blue bag that uh, sees some devices in its range and tries to propagate that devices, and these devices itself um, then propagate to other devices the uh, envelope, the payload, and return results back. Uh, the envelope is really nothing more than a huge if. If the code is executed on the target, it executes uh, the run method of the payload to uh, do the task assigned. Uh, Otherwise, uh, it just try to scan for devices and tries to propagate to that devices. Uh, okay, of course, having a target list and a group of payloads enable us to uh, deploy different payloads to different targets to do whatever we want. Um, how can that thing actually propagate? Um, worms, up to now, propagate uh, using uh, almost exclusively that kind of social engineering techniques, uh, the Kabir A worm, the Lesko A worm, uh, substantially tries to uh, scan for devices and try to push itself to other devices, and if the user accepts, then they install themselves. At present, they uh, don't exploit any kind of vulnerabilities, but there's nothing uh, stopping or um, that could not um, make possible to use vulnerabilities to attack devices and deploy some kind of software using the right vulnerability. Okay, up to that point, we have a tool that uh, can do that sort of distributed scanning, uh, quite effective, um, can deploy software agents to devices can propagate uh, as a worm would do, but, but uh, can be propagated, for example, by the blue bag, so in a more effective way, because the blue bag has many dongles, so it's quite um, effective, um, beside its coverness. And these agents can carry payloads, can uh, execute themselves on the targets, return results back, and so on. Okay. Uh, from now on, uh, the agents could do uh, many other things, in fact, because they're quite, uh, our framework is quite generic. We use it for um, distributed serving, but uh, we could give agents a specific target 
so that the, these envelopes tries to propagate right to a specific target. The payloads could do um, whatever, uh, also evil things, because uh, why you can, what, when you can execute something on the device, you can do anything. They could key log, they could sniff, uh, record the audio, or whatever. And what's kind of interesting, they could return the results back using emails. They could do HTTP requests to a malicious web server that logs the data. Uh, and everything, maybe without ever getting into the range of the victim, because uh, the propagation make possible to uh, make the payload arrive on the device being quite far, and the results can return um, can return back not only via Bluetooth. Okay. Um, we clearly couldn't test that uh, in a real situation because it's not kind kind of fair. Uh, then we tried the, some sort of academical, probably, way. Um, we studied the mathematical models that are used to, um, to model epidemic spreading, but that are used and applied quite uh, successfully also to study the propagation of computer viruses. Um, the most used and effective models are the Kermak and McKendrick models. These models are, are developed to be applied in homogeneous environment, that is, like the, uh, yeah, the internet or uh, environment in which uh, the probability to find vulnerable or um, immune subject uh, individuals uh, is quite um, homogeneous. <laughs> and um, they require that um, the spreading doesn't suffer from the uh, geographical locality. So if you think about um, a computer virus spreading, uh, it is, it's spreading which is not affected by a geographical factor because in fact, uh, using the internet, it can um, infect a computer everywhere. Uh, that's a completely, different, a completely different environment from the one in which the blue bag would apply because we are very affected by the geographical factor because the propagation uh, must be performed by a Bluetooth. So uh, some a range that uh, uh, can be at maximum 100 meters, a kind of geographical constraint. Uh, okay, uh, due that this hypothesis done, done doesn't apply, uh, we try to go the simulation path. Um, okay, we choose uh, a simulation uh, uh, provocation scenario which we'll show in a couple of slides. We try to choose uh, reasonable parameters for that simu simulation. And actually, we use the data that we collected during the survey, uh, looking for these stupid people, which in fact uh, are the largest percentage of the device that we can consider vulnerable. Because a user that accepts a, tra a data transfer is considered vulnerable. Uh, okay. Um, using that simulation, uh, we wanted to evaluate, uh, estimate how effective uh, a malware that propagates that way will be uh, really successful. Uh, there's a quite uh, tough problem because it's not easy to. Uh, uh, describe the movement of a large number of devices in space. It's quite difficult, cannot be done by hand. Um, we found a very interesting work by two res Italian researchers uh, that are, are actually working in the UK. 
their work, their latest work, is, in, uh, is a community-based mobility mod model for ad hoc network research. Their work applies, uh, uh, mm, in fact, to ad hoc networks, but is perfect also in our case. And um, they developed a tool uh, that can generate movement traces of devices, of nodes of a network. Uh, you can specify the minimum and maximum uh, speed of these nodes and uh, another bunch of parameters. Uh, we had to build, oh, we built actually uh, a simulator, an, some sort of simple network simulator that uses these traces as input. These traces tells him uh, that the node uh, 11 uh, at uh, x instant of time is displacing to uh, a point in space with a, a defined speed. And that simulators try to mimic um, the behavior of a world spreading so a piece of software that scans for devices tries to transfer uh, weight uh, for an answer from their victims and so on. Uh, we are in fact uh, trying to develop uh, an evolution of that simulator using the NS2 network simulator. Uh, the NS2 network simulator um, will be probably um, useful to get more um, physically sound results because it will take into account also uh, radio collision and that kind of uh, details. Okay. Okay, uh, we consider a simple simulation context. We consider a shopping mall with the surface you can see in the slide, uh, 78 shops and Something like that, that's a, a real shopping mall, but uh, we try to uh, work in a quite real scenario, also if it's a simulation. We fix the number of devices to 184, which is the number of devices that we actually found in that place during the survey. And we decided to consider uh, as vulnerable the 7.5% of devices. Uh, we did mm, many runs of the simulator and uh, generated randomly the vulnerable characteristics of the different node. Uh, so we had simulation with more or less vulnerable individuals and we computed the average. Uh, we used a Bluetooth range of um, 15 meters, which is kind of reasonable if, you, if we take into account that it's an indoor context and that actually we're using mobile phones. Okay. Uh, some words about the results. We, in fact, uh, consider two different situations in that context. The, fir the first settings um, tries to mimic what uh, human beings will do uh, going in and out shops in, uh, in this shopping mall, so moving quite quickly from one shop to another, while uh, a small number of devices will remain for a long time inside the shops. Um, the simulation results are quite surprising. Um, the number of infected devices between the vulnerable one was 82.4% after only 30 minutes average. And after one hour, every vulnerable device in, is infected, actually. Uh, the average time for uh, the infection to uh, propagate to every vulnerable device was about 35 minutes. Um, we tried also not a setting in which we are um, simulating um, human beings in restaurant area or lunch area, something like that, where people are much more uh, statically. Uh, they're, not moving, they're not moving, actually, not more. And s mm, only a small number of people 
displays uh, to different area inside the lunch area. Uh, the result, well, as we expected, in fact, after having seen the result of the other setting, uh, is quite surprising because the 100% of the vulnerable devices was infected after less than uh, half an hour. In fact, uh, the average time was 12 minutes. That's explainable because uh, devices are quite um, fixed in their place, so the uh, spreading is quite more effective. Um, okay. Um, the simulation. Uh, yeah. uh, the infection uh, started just oh, for yeah. one device, so we consider we are um, we have considered yeah. uh, just one uh, device. Yeah, at time zero, we have only one device infected in the simulation. Okay, let's sum it all up a little bit. Uh, the Bluetooth technology is definitely not only for the GIC anymore. Uh, we wander in many places and we found a ton of devices, so uh, that's definitely uh, quite spread now, nowadays. Um, People doesn't seem to be really conscious of the potential threats because otherwise they wouldn't keep their phones with the Bluetooth uh, turned on or in discoverable mode. And uh, they are not conscious because they actually quite easily accept transfer from uh, unknown people. And we didn't use trick like uh, setting the Bluetooth ID to something interesting. Um, okay, um, the spreading techniques could be much uh, more complex because um, we could use attacks, we could use such an engineering, we can use the blue bag, which is kind of an effective instrument. Uh, in fact, uh, in the end, uh, the possibility to create, for an attacker to create a real complex attack scenario seems more than, a, than an idea. We build the tool that can be used also for something evil, in fact. Um, okay, and anyway, the data we collected are quite interesting and can be used to uh, do many interesting evaluation about that kind of things. Uh, what we, we're working on now is to actually um, implement a study in how many ways data could return back to something like the blue bag or the uh, attacker headquarter. And also we are trying to develop um, more effective ways to auto-execute the, uh, the worm itself on the device to which it propagates and to hide itself uh, from the user. Okay, uh, here you find some references about the Bluetooth uh, tactical yeah. I think uh, I forgot yeah. one thing. Yeah. Uh, the survey uh, software will be available uh, on our uh, company website, um, maybe in September. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we need to polish it a little bit more, add some comments, uh, take the sheet out, and so on. Um, well, other links, the to find it guys for Bluetooth security vulnerabilities and so on. And the simulator stuff, so the mobility model, model the network simulator, quite boring stuff. Um, okay, thank you. If you have any question, you're here. Okay.